Hey there, geeks! Adam coming at you with a wizard special video presentation. As you can see here, we have the previews catalog from June 1993, and we've shared some scans from this in the past, but I wanted to kind of go through this in depth and really check out page by page what was going on in the comic book industry, talk about what we've covered in the past. So let's get into it here. As you can see on the cover, Batman Nightfall uh, was all the rage here with Asbats, and you even have this cool pop-out right there, as you can see, it's got a pop-out uh, there, and and they were just everywhere you looked, right? You're going to flip for previews. They're giving you the gems of the month here. So everything you would expect, of course, Batman 500, got Gambit uh, advertising, X-Men number 25, Plasm number one, more about that, Reign of the Superman. I mean, there was just so much going on here. Uh, but it's nice to see that they uh, are giving the spotlight to the Dark Knight at this time. The splash page, I guess, is the things that they wanted to give their opinions on here. I do like that the tick tack or TV tackles the tick, I should say. Try saying that three times fast. Uh, also, you get some write-ins uh, from the retailers, I guess. is it? I want to know how many people were the actual retailers uh, that were getting previews, which was the majority, I'm going to assume, and how many just general comics fans got a subscription. Uh, but here you go, a whole interview with Denny O'Neill about what was going on in the Batman books at the time, and just the history of the Dark Knight, so that's pretty interesting. There you go. Batman beating up Superman in The Dark Knight Returns. So that's interesting there. Uh, Cerebus. Look at all this. Two pages devoted to Cerebus Comics. Just trying to get you caught up on this long-running series here. Now, AC Comics. I've always wondered if they set themselves up to be at the front of every catalog. That's why they were AC. But they produced Femforce Comics. I remember Femforce really, like, having a big push in this era when I was collecting, you know, starting out, and I was getting, like, pogs and buttons, like, Femforce promo stuff was all over the place. Now, here's E-Man. I have never read this, but this was mentioned recently. Maybe it was Joe Casey. Somebody on the podcast said, I grew up reading a lot of weird comics, and E-Man was mentioned. <laughs> Uh, Acid Rain Studios. I mean, that's pretty awesome there. I've never heard of Tales of Lethargy, but that sounds like a lot of fun. In fact, that almost looks like The Punisher mixed with, I don't know, uh, maybe like Ernie from the uh, Sesame Street. Now, S S Amazing Heroes is one of those magazines that definitely, you know, was kind of a fanzine doing all the interviews that had a lot of sway before Wizard. And I don't know if Wizard ate their lunch and they slowly disappeared because of that. But Plasm, once again, being mentioned here, exclusive interview with Jim Shooter. He was getting all over the place. Uh, now... This over here, they're, they're talking about the Anaya-related merchandise, Anaya collector cards. So this was an all-African-American produced comic book company. We covered several of uh, the books in their catalog in the early days. So it's just kind of interesting to get that perspective and uh, see what they were doing. They were kind of at odds with Milestone, saying like, well, we did it first. Uh, but of course, you know, <laughs> Milestone maybe did a little bit better, had more DC backing to help them. So Antarctic Press, of course we know they came to be known for, uh, you know, some bad girl comics and things like that. Uh, but interesting to see what they were putting out here. It does say adult material, so you got that going on. Uh, what else we got over here? Apple Comics. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Damien Dark. Never heard of this, uh, but painted covers by John Bolton, who he did uh, the movie, you know, comic book adaptation for Army of Darkness, which we just talked about on our Patreon. And it is beautiful. The work that he did in there is so cool. All right. So the bogeyman, How, uh, John Wagner, Alan Grant. Okay. So some people with some bona fides there. Lazarus Churchild? What? <laughs> okay. This is interesting to me. Why did they bother to advertise Archie Comics? It just feels like it was a given. You're going to get them at your local grocery store. I'm sure they were being stocked at some comic book stores, but it just kind of felt like, yeah, I don't know. Like, did you need to know what was happening? Archie's pretty much been the same always. Uh, <laughs> but here you go. Comic Values Monthly. So here's yet another, uh, you know, 
you know, group of uh, publishers, I guess you would say, people getting involved, trying to jump on the Batman Nightfall bandwagon. Because look at this, they're giving you uh, a Graham Nolan Scott Hanna poster. There's, uh, they're giving you all this uh, details. There's a giveaway with an original pencil illustration. Doesn't tell you of what or of who. <laughs> but hey, original art is original art. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so obviously this is jumping out here. Plasm, Warriors of Plasm is eventually what it would be called because of the Marvel lawsuit. But this is the number zero issue just bound in here. And I believe, if I remember correctly, the Zero Issue was also part of the trading card set. So you could get, like, the, collect the entire set of trading cards and it would add up to this issue. I may be misremembering that, but I remember that it was advertised as a full comic, you know, in trading card form. So this is really interesting, though, just to see before uh, <laughs> they had to change some things around what they were doing. But they're... Letting you know, so totally bound in comic. Lost laughter, okay? Before the aliens as the gods retreated to a quiet corner of heaven. Hmm, okay. After the superheroes died. That's an interesting setup, I would say. Uh, Black Dragon Press. I mean, there were just so many indie comics companies popping up everywhere. I'd love to know how many of these were like holdovers from the 80s black and white boom. And how much of them were jumping on this early 90s boom in and of itself? Uh, Brainstorm comics. Yeah, okay. So, Death Shrike. Now, over here, yet another one. So, we got Comic Book Week and Comic Talk. So, yeah. So, again, everybody was like, we're going to be your source of news for comic books. But did they have the panache of Wizard? That is the question. They didn't last. So, we're going to see one of the big competitors coming up soon. But uh, Bog the Frog, gotta say, I like that idea. Bog the Frog sounds like a <laughs> fun time. Uh, Gauntlet Comics, okay. How many of you are collecting these? Ooh, look at this now. Here we go. So there's Chaos Comics, Evil Ernie the Resurrection number four. Giving you some excitement there. Cine Fantastique, order your magazines. Elementals, hmm, okay, comic. Comico. That's what one of those things is like. It's Comico, right? I think they say it's Comico. All right. Elementals. You can get a Sacker Hawks head emblem t shirt. Okay. If you're a big fan of Sacker Hawk. Saker Hawk? Uh, okay. So now we got Neil Adams Continuity Comics. Uh, I don't even know. Oh, Megalith Werewolf. Okay. He gets turned into a werewolf. There you go. Cap did it. Why not Megalith? Okay, so comics interview, Batman Nightfall. That's a pretty, like a bleeding Batman logo. That's kind of neat there. Ooh, look, Lycra Woman and Spandex Girl. Now, from what I recall, we read an article that said they actually had to change the name because, was it Lycra or Spandex? One of those was copyrighted, so they could not use the name of that material. Uh, okay, here we go. So here's some more continuity comics here. And, yep, so Armor and Samari. Even more. Wow, Neil Adams is going all out here. Like, Cyber Rad and all, all this. Like, even the person who had this before decided, okay, we're going to get Miss Mystic. We're going to get Megalith. Crazy Man comics. Wow. There it is. Man, it's just keep... Oh, but look here. Cry for Dawn Productions. Okay, so the History of Torture and Punishment card set. Well... That's what the kids were into, right? <laughs> Torture and punishment, but there's Cyber Rad. Okay, so there's Comics Greatest World, telling you all about barbed wire, the machine, and everything they were trying to build up. So this was an interesting idea. I mean, you know, we got barbed wire and ghosts that managed to survive, I think, because of the bad girl boom, but otherwise, everybody else kind of disappeared for the most part. Although, a lot of those Dark Horse comics ended up making an appearance, at least the promotional materials, in Mystery Men. When we talked about that on our 90 Super Cinema series, that was kind of fun to see. They had a lot of promo stuff there. Look, John Byrne's Next Men, number 11. Sid City Limited Edition hardcover. So Dark Horse going all out here. Grendel Tales. Okay, some Aliens books. Always got to have those Alien books. All right, now what do we have here? Oh, this is, yes. Okay, so this, this is a preview. Wait a minute. 
John Byrne did an Aliens book? I didn't know about that. Earth Angel. That's cool. I was I thought that was something that I was forgetting about from uh you know from Next Men, but oh now Universal Monsters Creature for the Black Lagoon by Art Adams. I do remember that being promoted in Wizard for sure. Some Robocop comics, some Predator. All right, go in here. Ooh, wow. The Thing from Another World, Climate of Fear. That one looks intense. Some Martial Law. Big 64-page collector's edition for Batman 500. How many variants of that were there? I, I didn't even grab it back in the day. I have it now, but there's the gem of the month. Everybody's telling you this is it. And of course, the person that had this before... So the Adventures of Superman Annual, which is Bloodlines Wave 2. Now we got to see, did they do the Bloodlines uh, that was the first appearance of Hitman? Because it feels like that's the only one that really mattered of all the new characters. Now look at this. Okay, so you got a nice breakdown of Joe Quesada's design of the Azrael Batman costume. Giving all his opinions on that. Some classic Batman covers, although I feel like these are not ones that are usually brought up. You know, I feel like you don't get to see that uh, that selection very often. What else we have here? So Green Lantern Mosaic was happening. There's hardware, so we got some milestone going on. Big Hellblazer special portfolio section. Okay. All right. What else were they highlighting here? Superman: The Man of Steel, twenty six. Very well. Some Hawkman, ever confusing. Okay, so we got some Reign of the Superman going on here. Some Icon. Okay, hmm. So, Ventures of Superman, nice. Um, yeah, I mean, DC was definitely putting out a lot of stuff. I mean, they were not slowing down in any way. They're going to cash in as much as they can. Even a four-issue Metal Men series. Oh, the Metal Men. Nobody's favorite. Is that one of the ones that James Gunn announced? Is he doing Metal Men trying to make that happen? I don't know. All in good time, I suppose. All right, so here we go. Once again, Plasm number one from Defiant. Now a full interview with Jim Shooter here. It's going to tell you what it's all about. Jim Shooter did get a hard time in the pages of Wizard. That is for sure. I mean, just I mean, the track record didn't speak well for himself, except for the legacy he left at Marvel, I feel like. But every new startup did uh, not go his way. But good guys. That's one that we have talked about on the show. I've always had a fascination with turning real comics fans into the characters. But of course, these are like the generic designs they had not based them on anybody just yet. So that's kind of cool. They at least let you know that was coming up. Of course, having Steve Ditko back was also a big deal on the Dark Dominion book. All right. So once again, that same. Oh, okay. So look at this big double page. Beyond the imaginary limits. Defiant. Oh, yeah. So there's. Yeah. The, oh, that's the Dominion zero issue trading card set. So they're not even advertising. The Plasm one. Okay, what's this one here? Jason as Bruce. Destiny is inescapable. I mean, definitely image-inspired. Destiny, huh? Faction number three, but Destiny Comics. I have not heard of them. But there you go. Ooh, okay, so now we're getting into some Disney. Now we, what is this? Draculita magazine. I don't know about Draculita. <laughs> Although I think it has been mentioned in the past on the show oh, there's some elvira phantom of fear city but all right spawn spogs the hottest collectible of 1993 i mean pogs were all the rage it is hard to uh, argue that but i'm curious to say okay subset of six prism pogs a prism pog board in every box what does that mean a prism pog board huh every pog has high gloss uv coating Platinum Pogs, solid nickel metal Pogs. So those were the slammers, Platinum Pogs. Interesting. And now you get a look at what they would look like in color. And then another ad over here. So yeah, the Spogs. Somebody out there has to have a full set. Probably our buddy, you know, who's our Spawn Hunter definitely has to have those. But man, really making a mark. Even in black and white. Look how much the Spawn artwork stands out compared to everybody else just the the inking i guess you would say 
All right, Eternity Comics, Captain Harlock. <laughs> uh, R. Sketchbook, okay. Love and Rockets, so we got, let's see. SQ Productions, Fleetway Editions, Forbidden Fruit. <laughs> yeah, adult material all over the place, okay. Wait, what is this one? Galaxy Novels, Agent 3-0, okay. And there it is, a full-page ad for Galax Galaxy Novels. I mean, I guess it's Galaxy Novels, Galaxy. <laughs> what do I know? I've never read this out loud before. All right, Disney Comics and who? Oh, Hall of Heroes. Okay, so before they got any of the, the big-name books, they had these books that were actually called Hall of Heroes. Okay, Ed Vortex. Interesting. And then Harris Comics right next door with Kane which we have talked about on the podcast. Yep, Kane number four, which was, uh, you know, they were tried to get Kane off the ground by, you know, working with Wizard to promote it, but a special insert card, and there was a two-card set. So this is interesting. An imprint called Nemesis, Ultraman, Frank, and Sequest. Ultraman, I have that comic still sealed that I got in a collection at one point that I picked up. All right, so we got Harvey Comics. Again, it's kind of like, well, you know what you're going to get when it's Harvey Comics. Megafax, Naked Steel, yeah, so. Ooh, now here's something that excites me, okay? This Horus Lord of Light. I loved everything Jim Valentino was doing uh, over at Image and with, you know, in collaboration with Alan Moore, this 1963 thing. Uh, I feel like they really did some neat stuff, uh, crossing over, creating their own universe. Of course, Horus was their version of Thor, but they really, you know, did a good job. Ooh, all right, here we go. So now we're getting into image stuff here, of course. Darker image, Cyber Force poster that you could buy, but here it is. So Fairchild as part of Gen X at this time, Grunge. Free fall, but look at just that payment, uh, you know, for your ad to have a little bit of color is going to make you jump out in a big way. So I have all of these. I cut them out of a different publication and put them all together to make like a Gen X. I don't know what you would call it. I guess uh, a memory board. <laughs> you know, people have their, their dream boards or whatever, but th this would be like, just to say, this is what could have been. I remember when it was Gen X and then it became Gen 13 coming in August. Oh, not if Marvel has anything to say about it, uh, but death blow. What? Look at all. So all of these were definitely for the ordering for whoever owned this the first time, because there's like, okay, we'll get death blow. We'll get the death mate epilogue and more about that soon. Well, what do you know? Extreme Studio is going to make an impact just instead of going black and white, going all black and a little bit of white. So Rob Liefeld telling us you want his comics. Savage Dragon. We're going to be talking to Eric Larson very soon on The Wizard Files. Of course, we have this. We've talked about this in the past uh, in our Gimmicks A Go Go segment back in the day and also shared it on some of our other YouTube videos that you can check out. Oh, and speaking of an old standby, there's Shaman's Tears. Yes, indeed. I wonder how far in this was before it got dropped, because this is number four. They probably got a few more out of it, but look over here. So this was very exclusive to this issue, because Deathmate had all the different colors, right? Deathmate Red, Deathmate Black, you know, all of those. But there were, in this, and I think it was an issue of Hero Illustrated, there was one other magazine that I think got a green version, but this is the orange, Deathmate Orange. So this is literally a unique comic that you could only get by ordering the previews catalog. So that's kind of neat. But then, yeah, they let you know what else is coming out from Wizard. Oh, stupid magazine. <laughs> All right. Super Patriot. Trencher. And R.I.P. Keith Giffen. Then we got Travis Cherist with uh, Wildcats. Okay. Let's see here. Star of the Month is the Vampire Lestat trade paperback. They really wanted you to hop on that interview with the Vampire Train. Ooh, okay. So here we go. We have a, a James O'Barr going by Jim O'Barr here. Wanted to be a little more casual, I guess, talking about the future of 
the crow and everything else he wants to do. Okay, flesh crawlers. The crow collected. Okay, oh, now this is cool. Image apparel, right? So you, you could get all sort of like logos embroidered on to your, you know, I, I guess you could have your choice. It's probably not a t-shirt. I'm going to assume these were like, you know, some type of fancier uh, design. Maybe you could get like a button down shirt. Maybe you could get a polo shirt. But of course we have these actual t-shirt designs. It looks like on tank tops, <laughs> get your breast logo, a gold faced watch with spawn. That's pretty neat. Okay. So lots of Lots of good stuff there. Okay, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs or the Xenozoic Tales. Force. Wow. Wow. Okay, first explosive issue. But this idea that you're going to 100% steal the X-Men font and X-Force, which had just been a hit, you know, a few years earlier. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Hop on what works. Mantra. Okay. So we've covered that in the past. We've had a, a special... You know, all, it wasn't chromium, but it was kind of a holographic gold cover for Mantra, silver cover, I think. I don't know. We had an Ultra Force one and a Mantra one in the archives that were given away uh, to the winner of one of our superhero drafts. What? Daredevil, the man without fear, five issue limited series. It's Miller time. All right. So now we're getting into Marvel. Lots of Venom. The cable trade paperback. Okay. What else do we have here? Dark Guard. Hmm. Well, there's something that didn't catch on. That must have been Marvel UK. Yeah, Marvel UK. Okay, so I remember that really tried to push that. I have found lots of Marvel UK in back issue bins. Oh, we got some Thunderstrike was on the list. Silver Surfer. So X-Men Milestone Edition. Okay. These are the things they were, were thinking we're going to sell. What else? X-Men Annual. X-Men Adventures. Wolverine. Okay, so... Definitely X-Men. Uh, Sabretooth. Okay, Every, everything's X-Men related that they're going to order. Gene Dogs. Genetics. Yeah, so definitely got more going on with Marvel UK. But what is this? Oh, okay. So now getting back to Dark Horse here, getting the checklist so you know of Comics Greatest World, what you should add. Now, kind of a missed opportunity here, not putting the checklist on the back here. Because, I mean, really, what, what are we even seeing there? It's just saying showing a few covers. There's Ron Lim's X-Men 2099. And actually right in front of me as I'm recording this is my 2099 framed covers and everything that I've put on there. So I'm actually seeing this cover in full color with its, uh, you know, kind of, yeah, I don't know, embossed, is it? I mean, it, it's kind of shiny, I guess, a wraparound cover. Uh, all right, so now we have... This gem of the month, once again, x Men 25. Fabian is writing that one at the time. Oh, so they were going to order some Marvel UK. They're like, it has an X in the title. Okay, we got to go for that. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Silver Surfer Dirtbag Special. The Infinity Crusade. I, what the? <laughs> wow, look at this, though. A George Perez Avengers 30th Anniversary poster? That's pretty neat. Wow. Yeah, that's neat. Oh, Wolverine keychain. Okay. Been a, or big pin. I don't know which that was supposed to be. Marvel Universe. What are these ones? The Oh, so these are. These are just all pins. Okay, pins from Planet Studios. Uh, nice to see that Thunderstrike got a pin back in the day. I feel like that's got to be the most collectible. Because how much Thunderstrike merchandise was there? I don't even think he ever got an action figure, which surprises me because it feels like Toy Biz was doing everything back then, every character they could. Give us Thunderstrike. Bioneers? What's next for Mirage? So this was what Kevin Eastman was trying to push and get people excited about. Xenotech? Huh. Stupid Heroes. Uh, that sounds like something I might be on board with, but it was instead of superheroes, Stupid Heroes. What's this over here? Plastron Cafe. City at War. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Next comics. Okay, oh, there's the tick. So we finally got to New England Comics. Mighty Wind Enterprises. <laughs> Gotta put that Y in there, and suddenly it's a whole different idea. 
Otherwise, I think of the uh, mockumentary. A mighty wind's a blowing across the land and across the sea. Anyway. All right. Now Comics was still hanging around in 93. Cato, Green Hornet, Fright Night, 3D Summer Special. I've got that. Oh, Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. That is a character that just wouldn't die. They're just like, Zen, remember Zen? We did action figures. We're going to do a video game. Bye, Zen. Ooh, look at this one. This is fun. Okay, Parody Press. We have Ultra, Clut Ultra Klutz, okay. And we have the Tax instead of the Max. Ghastly Writer. Can't even read this one. What is that supposed to be? But Infinity Charade, Malcolm X-Men, and Death Date. Ooh, Death Date sounds like that could be fun. Whoever they're mixing up there. Wow, but the Tax. That cracks me up. That's a good one. All right. Pocket change. Donna Matrix. Uh-oh. Yeah, so this is the one of the original digital comics. And, of course, with any new technology, what do you go for first? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so Donna Matrix Raging Rhino Productions. Wow. Yeah, so... Oh, wow. Okay. Now, there's something I want to know about. The Kiss Prehistory 3-pack. It's a limited series for revolutionary comics. I don't know if that ever got published because I've seen a lot of the revolutionary kiss comics. I have several, but I've never seen this. This is from their area, their era in 1979. Those costumes are called their dynasty costumes or, you know, super kiss is what the fans refer it to. But wow, I'd love to find that if that existed anywhere, but I have a feeling kiss shut them down at a certain point. So you can't do this anymore. All right. Now check this out from the publishers of Hero Illustrated, EGM. But that is funny to me because Electronic Gaming Monthly predated Hero Illustrated. So they're just saying like, well, if you don't like video games, you like Hero Illustrated, right? We're the same company. Okay. Slave Labor Graphics is the name I hear about all the time. Bill the Cloud, Death, and Cloud White. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else. Spoof Comics. What do they have for... Okay, so Wrench and Stinky instead of Red and Stimpy. Uh, any other... That's it? There's like Spoof Comics. Spoof Co Comics presents... Oh, Shaquille O'Neal and Swamp Thang. Okay. Starlog. So you could order your issue of Comic Scene or Starlog or Fangoria back then. Ripley's Believe It or Not. And that's... Well, okay. So they were just illustrating all the stories behind the people who did amazing things. Star Tech. Star Warp Concepts. Succeed Comics. Ooh. All right. Now, now we're getting to the good stuff. Okay. So, Mr. T here. Uh, this was from Continuity Comics. Or was it? Or did they just... No. Or did they just... I think... I know Neil Adams was doing the art. But this is... Oh, was that now comics? Okay interesting so yeah ralph snart was still hanging around sting of the green hornet that's pretty neat though full color but of course i'm more excited about this stuff over here okay there is a hot wheels price guide which is neat there is jason goes to hell the final friday jurassic park but this right here okay uh on the retro network trn tv channel I just covered the Last Action Hero trading cards. I opened up a vintage pack, and inside of that video, I was also sharing that this three-issue series never came out, okay? But I was able to get a hold of the set of promotional cards that were supposed to be inserted with each issue. So if you're interested in that, to see these, you know, unreleased... As far as I know, nobody else has a set of cards. You should go over and check that out, the Last Action Hero video. But Topps Comics, definitely getting all the licenses they could there. So Jurassic Park, Ray Bradbury, the Coneheads, movie photo trading cards, Street Fighter. Now that's pretty cool because it looks like definitely more based on the, uh, the video game than the eventual movie we got like a year later. But Street Fighter trading cards, Teen Agents. Secret City Saga, Jack Kirby. There it is. So there you go again. See, three exclusive trading cards. Uh, and it never happened. Oh, man, I still want to see those pages, though. <laughs> I want to see the adaptation. All right, here's the Chromium Man. This is Techno Comics? Is that what the T stands for? Oh, no, Triumphant Comics. Okay. And they also had Scavengers. Never heard of that one. Uh, 
What's this one? Exiles number whoa, because we're in the Ultraverse now. Okay. But that's a weird I've I've never seen that logo, so I think they severely overhauled Exiles at that point. Yeah, because that doesn't look anything like the Exiles I recall. Even this logo is different from that one we saw on the other page. There's prototype, but we we're just interviewing Hank Canals about his experience with the Ultraverse and everything he was helping to influence. So very cool to see that coming out here. Ursus, Ursus Studios, okay. Buster, <laughs> Buster the Amazing Bear. He's looking pretty dramatic there. Okay, oh, Second Life of Dr. Mirage. So here we are with Valiant. Yep, so they really thought that was going to be a big one. More, uh, you know, comics for adults and for women. Okay, but Valiant, of course, is going to be all about Deathmate at this time, but Got some Exo Man of War. All right, Viz Communications. Doing a lot of their manga and anime stuff. All right. Oh, I didn't know that there were Valiant pins that were being produced. That's pretty cool. Wow. And image and everything. But a Bloodshot pin. That's pretty cool. All right. Hero Illustrated number three. Okay, exclusive dealer promo. For every 25 copies of Hero Purchase, dealers will receive a special prism foil version of Premier Edition number six, sealed in plastic and numbered with the Hero Seal of Authenticity. Wow, so if, you know, Heroes, uh, the Illustrated podcast, probably in their archives over there, they've got that, they've got their heads on it somehow. Okay, now what do we have here? The first image Hero premiere edition which is oh horus lord of light so they were really pushing that and q unit number six man q unit tried its hardest didn't it to make us care that's something we reviewed and covered but hey if you're gonna talk about hero you gotta talk about wizard wizard number 25 which they celebrated with their wizard pogs and of course that never happened they're promoting six pogs in a pack 36 packs 12 boxes uh and then guess what they never produced them. They weren't called Pogs, even. They're like, okay, well, you know, we're going to have to change the name. But, yeah, it just never happened. Just this this huge what if. There was even going to be a Wizards Pogs booklet. So all you got was one that was a 25th anniversary. And then that was the end of the story. We're interviewing Garib Sheamus soon. I might be able to get the story there. Who knows? But speaking of Wizards, so we have right here uh, from Brian Cunningham... Uh, he does a, a write-up all about Batman, which is cool. All right. Uh, now, these are additional comics. I wonder how you feel when you're relegated to additional comics. So, more 1963. There's the Max, number one. Huh. So I wonder, what do they say here? Although the solicitations in this section were received after our customary publisher's deadline, they are, to the best of our knowledge, both accurate and complete. Okay, so these are the people that were a little too late uh, to be in the main section. Bloodfire from Lightning Comics. Man, Lightning Comics. I don't see any other nude variants being publicized here. There's Captain Canuck. All right, there's some Valiant. Some more coming through. Okay um hmm. all right so there's books this is cool cartooning with the simpsons that's pretty neat learn how to do that all right okay i was gonna say is anything jumping out of these books well i get a william shatner book what wow there, there was a tie-in to the series coach book that's pretty neat i did not know that that was uh <laughs> Oh, what am I doing here? Bart Simpson's Guide to Life? I bought this back in the day. I still have my copy. I have read it countless times. So great to see that. Lots of Simpsons books out there, uh, which I also bought. Uh, Akira. Okay. What's this one here? Superman, Doomsday, and Beyond. Uh, companion Volume. Hmm. Okay. What else do we have here? All right, so here's games. If you were... One of those folks doing tabletop gaming. Interesting. Okay, Dwarf King's Throne of Power. <laughs> okay, lots of stuff. All right. Marvel's Magneto number zero, free for a price. Knight of the Iguana. Okay. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Getting the, the big name gaming stuff going here. All right, more games. Star Wars 2nd Edition, Shatter Zone. 
brain burn. Ooh, so there's the art of Ken Kelly. As a Kiss fan, he did uh, the covers for Destroyer and Love Gun, two Kiss albums. I just picked up Love Gun on vinyl. All right, here we go. Now we get to enjoy some of this fun art in uh, different formats, like t-shirts or posters, temporary tattoos. How about that? All right. Ooh, they were going to order the Silver Surfer t-shirt. Okay, wow. Star Trek Next Generation Strategy Game. Jason Goes to Hell t-shirt. Frankenstein Meets the Space Monsters. Okay. All right, lots of Star Trek here. Okay. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Ooh. Check that out. Those Universal Monster model kits plus Batman Returns. Looking good, man. Could use some of those for my Batman Returns correction. All right, here we go. So here's Anaya here talking about their trading card set. I wonder how many of those are still in a warehouse somewhere or if they were able to send them out for promotional purposes. The anime explosion continues. Okay. Oh, Mr. Bill. Okay. I had this video back in the day and I'm so sad that over the years it went missing. I don't even know why. Oh no. But then I was able to pick myself up a copy on eBay just a few years back I uh, love me some Mr. Bill. Fun fact, Ellen DeGeneres' brother is the one who created Mr. Bill, which is crazy. Look at this. TV's Best Adventures of Superman video series. Superman the Serial. What's this other one? Okay. Oh, Superman vs. the Mole Men, which didn't even feature that Superman, so that's weird. All right. Wow, look at all this. That's a lot of cool t-shirts. A Hulk 2099 t-shirt. I gotta have that. Oh. All right. Here's the sports section, which we'll flip through quickly. Don't need to spend too much time on the sports. All right. What else have we got here? Flip chips. So that's a different type of pogs. Okay. Flip chips. I love the clever names. Oh, Ben Schwarber's cards. Yep. There you go. No nudity. <laughs> Is that a selling point or not a selling point? I guess because it means the parents would let the kids pick it up. All right. What else we got here? Yep. Okay. Getting to the end of it here. This has been a wild video. Okay. So these ones, maybe uh, there is some nudity here. Every man's fantasies. I don't know. Twice the sex appeal for cards. So they say. Mm, let's see. Classic American guitar card series. Just pictures of guitars, okay. Everybody's got their thing. John Paul George Ringo, the Beatles collection trading cards. Interesting. Playboy private collection collector cards. Wow. I guess they figure if we print it in a magazine, we can print it as cards. All right. Color previews. Wait, seven color previews, only 98 cents. Hmm, what's this all about? New magazine for the folks at Comic Shop News. Oh, so they would give you the previews so you could see what the comics were all about, see if they were actually worth anything. Okay, comic convention at the San Diego Comic Center. Oh, it's, it's Comic Center. Convention Center. Scott McCloud, Dan Klaus. Okay. Oh, the Diamond Star System. Order any Star System item listed in this section through any fine comic shop near you. Hmm. All right, so yeah, so these are like their highlighted items, I guess. Interesting. Go through all that. All right, here we are in the back. Now, we're going to have to flip this over because the last gimmick of this was that it was a flip book of sorts. So there are the X-Men 2099. Lots of Marvel here, okay. Very proud uh, of having Frank Miller back. Doing Daredevil. What else we got? Okay, Thunderstrike again. Saint Sinner. Don't know that one. Yep. All the X-Men stuff. Okay, so Marvel just basically paid to have their own section of previews. That's wild. The screw tape letters. She Hulk 56. Okay. Night Stalkers number 12. Namor 43. Hmm. Okay. What else we got here? The Darkhold, Ghost Rider, Resurrected, trade paperback. <laughs> there you go. Some Barbie comics. Uh, Wild Thing. X Factor. Okay. 
Lots of color though here. Oh, that's that's an interesting Hulk versus Thor there. Is that what I'm seeing? Warlock of the Infinity Watch, so okay. Oh, here's a better look at some of these t-shirts though. That Hulk 2099 shirt was showing up all over the place. Oh, there's the Storm swimsuit poster from the Marvel swimsuit special. Okay, Toy Bez. Ooh, what's this? X Men 1992 Super Size Figure Assortment Cyclops, Wolverine, and Sabretooth. That's cool. Giant figures. Oh. We can get an interview with John Francis Moore about X Men 2099. He was also writing Doom 2099 at this time, so that's interesting. Wow, look at this. Okay. So, what are these? Crabbed with the hottest art for Marvel's hottest artists. Fans will... Oh, th these are posters. Okay, so this is... More X-Men 2099. I mean, they're like, X-Men are big. You want everything. Okay, finally here, a contest for the Sega Genesis, the X-Men game there. Wow. Okay, well, guys, that does it. Uh, that was our look at the previous catalog from June 1993. I hope something jumped out for you there. Thanks for sticking through all the way. I hope you enjoyed this adventure. And hey, we are going to be back uh, with more content very, very soon. So keep an eye out for some of the uh, Wizard Files interviews, among other special surprises. So stay tuned and we'll check you later.